Good morning, and welcome back to NPR. I, I mean, uh, KSP. Um, so I collected some more science, and uh, basically, as you see, I'm going through the skill tree right now, collecting other uh, experiments. Um, I was not happy with how much science I got from the moon, and really less happy with the fact that I lost my space station. So I am going to build a SSTO, as I said before. The problem I have, however, is going to be uh, what I finally built, I can guarantee you, is not going to make it into space. Why? Because I've done this already. Um, I will get it into space. It has officially become my goal. Uh, I do need. To, I did realize I need to change the interior a little bit. Um, I've got a lot of unnecessary things inside, that uh, like the fuel tanks, basically. Um, yeah, I tried to cut this video down as much as possible because it's really boring. Um, it's really just a lot of me faffing about trying to get this thing to take off first, and then trying to get it to get into space. Uh, so, yeah. The reason I'm using the uh, uh, hangar is because I can put the lab section inside of it. And see, the lab section was the biggest problem is because, is because it's so big, I don't have a choice but to use... How do I explain it? I have to use the big one because the lab section is so big. Um, I actually really, really wish they had like a junior lab section. Maybe it didn't hold as many kerbals. Maybe it couldn't process as much science. Or maybe it just took longer to do everything. Uh, that would have been great. But they don't. And so I'm forced to use big parts. Um, so I don't have a choice. I've got to get this thing into space if I want to... Uh, use it because I need the lab section for what I land on other planets to process the science and all that so that way I can reuse everything um, there's a lot on this thing that still needs work uh, most notably I don't like the way it looks I kind of frankly, I just I I really don't like the way it looks. Uh, <gasps> one of the things I wanted to get were those wings. They are ridiculously massive and have tons and tons and tons of lift, and also mass, but mostly lift. Uh, I did leave in some of the test footage because I figured you guys would like to see that. I know you guys like seeing when experiments go wrong because you two people are horrible. Not you guys, but others. Um, but yeah, as I said, for the most part, it was just me faffing about with yet another space plane, as they call it, SSTO, whatever. Um, a really big one. Surprisingly, it actually flew fairly well. Uh, I did leave some of that footage in as well. But most of what you're going to see is just me building this stupid thing. Because it's freaking huge. Um, yeah. So. I'm trying to think. I do want to take the... Um, I, once I get this thing to the point where it can fly with that massive amount of weight inside of it, I need to take that massive amount of weight out and uh, go up and pick up the old lab section and bring it back because there are still Kerbals in it. <laughs> um, also, I did attach the crew cabin uh, because I suspect that by having the extra crew cabin on there, I will be able to bring back more science. It'll like the whole thing will hold a bit extra science. I'm not 100% certain how all that works. 
just yet, but I do plan to find out. I most likely won't show a lot of the test footage. Uh, so the next time you guys see this thing, it'll be space worthy. Because it just really takes a very, very long time. Which is why you'll notice a few cuts and skips is because... Flying takes forever, uh, especially in KSP, because you spend 90% of your time going straight and you don't actually have to be at the keyboard. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, the first flight this thing does, so this one right here, no wait, it's not this one, it's the next one. I know that because of the number of engines on the side of the plane, or on the bottom of the plane. Uh, the next flight, I literally, while it was in flight, got up and walked away and went to take care of I had to take my drink out of the freezer and toss it in the refrigerator because I was like yeah this is gonna take a while that's how long that thing took uh, I, I mean you can literally walk away from these things and not be concerned one bit so as you see I put two extra engines on there which of course is a bit worrying because those engines do 225 pounds of thrust each so yeah, you're talking, well, that's about 12,000 pounds of thrust, give or take, you know, for uh, this one plane. Uh, you'll also see me constantly coming back. That's because the engines aren't activating properly like they should be. Uh, the first problem was I had them set up to the action group, and when I added the extra engines, I didn't add them to the action group. So, uh, but... Here we go. As you can see, it still takes the whole runway, but it will eventually get off the ground. So, um, I actually cut this flight down for you guys uh, to show you that, A, not only can it actually fly, although it takes the entire runway to do so, uh, or should I say it can get off the ground, although it takes the entire runway to do so, it can actually fly. So, uh, I actually spliced out a massive chunk of the middle bit. I mean, dude, we're talking probably about five minutes got cut out of this flight. And as you'll easily be able to tell because watch where the sun is now. So you see where the sun is now and watch the, well, you guys can see the time clock. So you'll know how many minutes exactly got cut out of this footage. Um, but I did leave quite a bit in. Like I said, I left in some of the test footage so you guys get to see all the fun, hilarious mistakes that occur when you try and build something that's the size of a 747 and put it into orbit. Which is great, which I love the 747. It's one of my favorite planes. Uh, second only to the YS. I don't even remember the stupid thing's designation anymore. I don't remember the real official destination, but it's the uh, SR-71 Blackbird. It's just like YS... Uh, I think it is YS-71. Is the official designation of it. Uh, and third only to the F-15, which is still my all-time favorite jet ever. Um, I will not show you guys any landing footage because, let's face it, you know, if you've seen this thing land, if you've seen these things land once, you've seen them land a hundred times. Uh, or at the very least, I won't show you guys any landing footage until I actually get this thing working properly. Uh, these little mistakes here, where it was running off the runway, that was because I had made some adjustments to the back end, and I didn't properly attach the back end to the rest of the plane. So... I don't know if I show... Yeah, there it goes. Um, that's what it was. The plane was flexing in the middle a little bit too much. And it was causing a bit of a problem. So it was causing the whole thing to run off to the side. Uh, basically, as you see it now, it's the same ship design. Only I put the main sail on the back. And it still doesn't work. So it needs more rocket power. And I'm actually thinking about moving that forward, to be honest with you. Because I need to get my center of mass and center of lift closer together. So, I might end up moving the, uh, 
Rocket Engine's full room, I can't tell you where I would put them, though. I'll probably switch it down to two skippers, because the skippers are 600 apiece. So, I don't know. We're just going to have to play this thing by ear. I mean, I could put them where the tail fin is. Put on two tanks there, and... Man, that's so much extra fuel, though. But I will be knocking out the fuel in the middle. The thing is, I need to make sure it can fly with that much mass in it, because that's roughly about the mass of the other lab section that I have in orbit right now. So, that's pretty much it for me, guys. Um, I'll keep working on this thing, tweaking this thing. Uh, unfortunately, KSP might take a bit of a hit because of it. And if so, I apologize now, and I will get back to these videos ASAP. So, I'm done for the day. As you see this thing go and flip out, guys. And, uh, yeah. So, that's it for me. And to that, guys, I'm gonna say, sayonara.